Hey, what's up guys? My name is Cameron Gallagher from We Are Film, and today we're shooting some film, so let's get into it. So we're actually not shooting film, we are going to be emulating film as best we possibly can. So one thing I want to do a video on is kind of talking about how you can make your project look like it was shot on film. Now of course there are a ton of different film stocks and you know of course we're having fun with some film stock right now, but one of the things that it comes to film is the way that the image is actually rendered on film. Now I say rendered, you think rendered in a video. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the way that film actually captures light itself. Now we're not gonna get scientific into it, but obviously there's a big difference between a digital sensor and a film sensor. Now the thing about digital, of course, there's a lot of flexibility and there's a lot of that kind of stuff going on. You have to be a little less careful. As film, you have to be much more careful and much more specific, but when you get film right, it looks incredible. Be sure to follow the Kodak Instagram channel. I mean, looking at some of the stuff on there, it is absolutely incredible just to see. And I've always wanted to shoot on film, but it's incredibly expensive to shoot on Super 16 or 35, really anything. So I wanted to show you how you can do this in a digital camera as best you possibly can. So obviously the first thing you wanna do is how we're going to shoot. Now, of course, one of the biggest things is lighting properly. If you are lighting properly, your image is going to look better in general, which is gonna help you push this film look. If you have a poorly lit scene, getting a film look is gonna be just as hard. Now, my recommendation is actually to not shoot at the highest resolution you possibly can. Now, although film is a infinite resolution in theory, typically you're scanning at like 2K. Most people are scanning 2K film, some people are scanning 4K, but in most cases you're shooting 2K film. I would recommend shooting in a 2K resolution with the best codec you possibly can. Something like ProRes 444, or some type of high-end ProRes that's gonna give you a ton of latitude in the color. One of the other things I would think about is using a vintage lens. Now, of course, this vintage lens is gonna help give you a creamier look and typically something that would be more shot on film. Because again, we relate film to a more vintage look. So using a vintage lens is going to just help a little bit. I'm not saying you can't shoot it on a modern lens. Again, it's just one of those things where if you shoot it on a vintage lens, it's going to have a little more of that vintage vibe. One of my favorite things and probably one of the biggest things that you can use is a black pro mist filter or some type of contrast filter or softening filter. In my case, I use the black pro mist 1 8th. I would probably say if you really wanna go for a hardcore film look, go for the 1 4th, maybe even 1 half. I would say 1 4th is probably the sweet spot in between there. But again, this is gonna help those highlights bloom, which is what film does typically. And it's gonna have a little less contrast, be a little bit more smoother on skin tones. All right, so now that we've done all that, let's jump into the computer and show you how you can emulate some of these. All right guys, so we are in the computer here and now we're going to start doing some film looks here in DaVinci Resolve. Now, what I'm gonna be doing here, you can pretty much do in any editing software, or color grading software, but might be a little bit different of a workflow. So one of the first ways that I wanna show you how to have a really just good film look. Um, this is a paid plugin and this is Film Convert. Now I talked about Film Convert Pro, but this thing is awesome. And if you're looking for the best emulation of film, by far, this is the best way. I'm not affiliated with them. This is just something I really do love. Of course, you just create a new node, you drag and drop. Now in our case, we were shooting on the Blackmagic Design Versa Mini Pro G2 and in film and boom, you basically automatically have film look and you know, a film look. And there's so many different types of film you can pick from. So you can pick different film stocks, things like that. Um, it's pretty amazing. And then you can also click the sensor size, which changes the film grain. Uh, it has grain built right in. Um, this is truly one of the quickest and easiest ways to get a true film look um, that is very, very accurate. Now, if you want to get a film look that's a little bit cheaper, uh, um, the first way I'm gonna show you is actually, shameless plug, by using our film looks uh, pack. We have the Cam LUT pack. Um, now this is actually for the GH5, but I'm gonna show you how you can use it for any camera. And we are gonna be coming out with a uh, some more LUT packs, so if you're not already subscribed, you know, be sure to do that, because we're gonna have some more soon. We might have actually a film LUT pack coming soon, uh, just for film. So what you would do is, for instance, this is on the Ursa Mini Pro G2. So you might be like, well, how is a GH5, you know, LUT pack gonna do anything for me? Well, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is just change the color space. Now, if you're shooting in RAW of any uh, kind, it's really easy. You just come down here, click clip. This is in the RAW settings. And then when you change the gamma, you're just gonna change it to V-Log. Um, and then in the color space, change it to V-Gamut. So now this is emulating a Panasonic's V-Log. Now the cool thing is, is then when you add a new node and you add one of our LUTs, they go on perfectly and they match. Now again, these are some pretty basic looks. 
Um, this basic Kodak film look is one of the more like filmic ones. And of course you can obviously add a little more, for instance, I might want to add a little bit more warmth to those mid tones, bring them up just a tad. We'll bring our highlights up and then we'll crush the shadows just a hair. Maybe we'll actually bring the shadows up and then the mid tones down, something like that. So we get kind of like a low contrast. So I'm bringing the, yeah, something like that. Cool. So that's a cool look to it. Um, one trick of course is adding film grain. Now something like Film Convert obviously has film grain built right in, but if you don't have film grain or a program that has film grain, you can easily go find a ton of different downloads. There's a ton of free ones. But all you wanna make sure you do is, is you're adding it to your media pool as a mat. So for instance, I'm going to go to, oops, I'll go to my film grain. So let's pick some film grain. We'll do the holy grain 4K, 35 millimeter. We'll do this first one. So you're gonna right click. And instead of clicking add into media pool, you're gonna to add to media pool as a mat. Now this is adding it in a different context than it normally would. So when you go back to the color page, all you have to do is click Alt S, Alt L, and you're adding a parallel node. Let me get rid of this here so we can see. And then what I like to do is just deconnect, uh, disconnect all of these. And then you're gonna right click on this node and click add mat. And you're gonna see our clip there. We don't want that timeline mats. And then we're gonna add that grain. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna delete that. And we're gonna delete this node. And then we're gonna drag this up here, right up here. So at this point, <laughs> you can see that it did nothing. So the two things we gotta do. First, we have to go into our um, external mat here, which is this little button right here. Click lock mat, and then we're gonna actually zoom this because we gotta scale it to our frame. Because in this case, we're sh we were had a widescreen timeline. If you had a 16 by nine timeline, you wouldn't have to do this. And the next thing you wanna do is on this layer mixer, right click composite mode, and then where is it? Overlay. And now you have grain. So now that film grain has been added on top, uh, again, as a map, and you could easily turn it on and off. But yeah, that's how you use film grain, and obviously that gives you a much more filmic look. Now another thing you can do, and this can go either way, typically what I like to do is add another node after, and then go to the qualifier here, and then qualify our highlights. So I'm just gonna click on all those, click Shift H, and we're gonna see what we got here. So those are pretty much our highlights. Now we're gonna, mess with this just a little bit. We're gonna soften it up, uh, make sure it's just mainly the highlights and some of the highlights of the actual uh, skin tone. So this is basically all of our highlights. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring up the denoiser here and then we're gonna just blur the crap out of that. Like really, really jack that blur up. And you can see when we sh click Shift H again and if we turn that on and off, it's not doing a ton, although the blurring is adding just a little bit of a uh, smoothness to our highlights. But the next thing that we can actually do is add a glow. So we can go here to our open effects. Just type in glow. And whoops, I can't see my node. <laughs> and then we're gonna click uh, glow, add it to those highlights. And now the highlight has a glow. Now this is something you really wanna dial in and kinda mess with. Um, you know, you don't want it to look super fake. This can look really bad, like really easily. But if you do it right, and then you blur the whole layer, so we'll add a Gaussian blur. That's too much. But you can see now when we turn this on and off, it's very subtle, but it's adding a blur to all of those highlights and it's making them a little bit creamier. And if you don't want the blur, you could do with uh, just the uh, actual uh, what is it, glow? <laughs> Lost my mind there for a minute. So you could do both. Um, really, either are gonna look really good. Let's put the glow back on. Uh, I like the glow personally, but again, it can look really bad in certain scenarios. But you can see, with it off, with it on, it just adds that kind of glow that, you know, film or something like film would have. It would kind of have that halo effect. And again, it's a style choice. It depends on if you want to do that or not. Sometimes it can look really bad. Sometimes it can look really good. You see, if we jump over to this clip right here, we can throw it on there and we can see what it looks like. And in that case, the glow is way too much. Um, so, you know, we might want to bring the glow way down. Uh, so it's adding just a little bit of a glow to the highlights. Um, so again, it can look really good in certain scenarios. You just want to be careful with it because it can look a little fake. 
But anyway guys, so those are some simple ways. Really when it comes to film emulation, I highly recommend using a LUT or some type of plugin because the reality is a lot of other people out there know a lot better than we do on how to make colors when it comes to especially film looks. And doing that for each one can be kind of difficult unless you're making groups or things like that. So in my case, either create a LUT yourself from a look that you like or go find one. There are a ton of LUT packs out there. The Trying Films has some awesome LUT packs. Obviously we have our LUT pack. I mean, there's just a million different LUT packs. There's um, Impulse, LUTify, obviously. There's a ton that you can go and find out there, and I really recommend doing that because it's gonna make sure that you get the closest to film look as possible. And there you have it. There are some ways that you can make your film look like it is actually film. So, anyway guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later.